Protectors of the Suna Suna Baba Protector of the Suna In alhamdulillah, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to the Tawhi class for today. And we are studying uh, the names of Allah. And by studying the names of Allah, not only do we get to learn about Allah, and not only does this cause us to develop love for him, but also by learning the names of Allah, we are learning how to strengthen our faith and how to deal with the trials of life, especially since the Muslim world is faced with uh, the uh, another uh, calamity uh, in another part of the Muslim world. But alhamdulillah, the Muslims there are handling themselves as they always do because the Muslims there are strong and Allah does not place a burden or calamity upon us that we cannot bear. And Allah promises that he will test us and he will test us in accordance of our strength. So to deal with the calamity such as war. Dealing with the calamity of war is one of the, the, the most uh, severe calamities of all to deal with. And Alhamdulillah, the Muslims over in that part of the world are able to handle it. That shows how strong their faith is. Okay, and as we talked about yesterday, when we went over one of the meanings of Allah's names, you know, when Allah sends calamities, calamity can be a punishment for some and a means of purification for others. And it's all dependent upon where you are in your belief and practice of Islam. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's just review what we discussed yesterday. We went over two names of Allah. Let me see if I can hold up my uh, whiteboard here. I mean, not whiteboard. Well, I'm using it like a whiteboard. We went over two. Uh, of Allah's names yesterday. Let me, here we go. Two of the names of Allah that we went over yesterday. One of the names was how Allah is El Aziz. How Allah is El Aziz. And what does it mean when we say that Allah is El Aziz? Okay, let me put it up here for just a second for you guys. It means that Allah is the almighty and he has unlimited power. We talked about how Allah has unlimited power. And also the fact that he has this unlimited power. What does that mean? That means that uh, he shows it to us in many different ways. And we spoke yesterday about how he shows his unlimited power by through the way he's able to hold the universe in place. We also discussed how he's able to show his unlimited power by the calamities that he sends. He can send calamities wherever he wants and he can make that calamity take on the occurrence of the appearance of whatever he wants, be it a tornado, be it an earthquake, be it war. All of this is El Aziz, how Allah has shows that how Allah has unlimited power. And we also spoke about how uh, Allah shows us his unlimited power by making that calamity either be a punishment or a blessing dependent on where you are and your belief of him. And finally, we gave another example of how Allah is El Aziz, how Allah has unlimited power, how he can allow a ship, a big ship to float or sail upon the sea. 
So those are the ways that we discussed yesterday in which Allah shows us his unlimited power. Now the question is, and the question becomes, how can we incorporate those examples into our lives and make them attributes for ourselves? What did we come up with yesterday for El Aziz? How can we incorporate uh, Allah's almighty power into our personal lives? How can we uh, take those attributes and apply them to ourselves? Who can tell us? What did we come up with yesterday? Anyone take the mic. What did we come up with as far as the meaning of El Aziz? Anyone? Come on, people, wake up. Sister Anissa. Okay. It don't seem fair because I can read it from what, you know, from what we screenshot yesterday. It don't matter. I want you to oh, summarize it. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. It. Well, we can, I can, we can hold ourselves accountable in the choices and decisions and actions that we make in life. And we'll work hard to not complain about the things that that's beyond our control. And uh, let somebody else can take over if they want Anyone to. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Okay, she gave us two examples as to how we can incorporate the meaning of El Aziz into our life. Anyone else? Sister Elma. Sister Zarina. What did we come up with for El Aziz? Sister Lucy. Sister um, 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 Fardousa. Sister Fresno. All right, you want to play with me, huh? Uh, let me see. Y'all talked about you can work hard to leave uh, thoughts behind that's uh, in the way. Mm -hmm. That's in the way of what? I don't know. <laughs> you know I was on my trip. Why you call on me? Okay. Listen, I'll help her. Get some of moving forward on our journey, especially after Ramadan now. We've purged and cleansed ourselves, so we should be practicing what we have done during Ramadan, what we've learned, and only concentrate on that which will better us in our journey towards life. Exactly. Exactly. This is these are some of the things we came up with since Allah shows his unlimited power by through the way the universe operates and how calamities occur however and take the form of whatever he chooses and how those calamities can be blessings or punishments we hold our we can take that and incorporate into ourselves by holding ourselves accountable for the choices and decisions and actions we make also we can work hard to not complain about the things that are beyond our control and instead learn to accept and make the best of those things and we can work hard to not uh, uh, to, to try to get rid of the bad habits and the bad decisions that we make that can be detrimental to ourselves and learn to leave behind all thoughts and past experiences that keep us from moving forward in our journey of life and only concentrate on that which will better us in our journey. Good job. All of that from El understanding the meaning of El Aziz and all of that from incorporating the attributes of having unlimited power. It takes power to leave the past behind. It takes power to focus on the future and not get sidetracked with what happened in the past. It takes power to let go of bad habits that can be detrimental to you. It takes power to hold yourself accountable for what you do, what you think, what you decide. 
So again, guys, having unlimited power, we learn from this attribute. Allah shows us his unlimited power. Let's work on have uh, this, of ad, displaying that power within ourselves. I may not can change or stop what's going on in Gaza. That's the decree of Allah. No one, not America, and I listen to people try to blame America. America ain't got nothing to do with what's happening over there in Gaza. What's happening in Gaza is because Allah willed it. Allah, if America was to self-destruct right now, that would not impact what's going on over there. They won't, wouldn't stop what's going on from happening. Allah is in control, guys. Y'all have to stop giving power to people and countries and flags and all of that pagan crap and give the power to Allah. I may not can stop it. I may not can change it, but I can make dua for the believers. That's all the believers need. I can make dua asking Allah to keep the believers strong in facing their trials. And I can also make do it for me. Oh, Allah, strengthen my faith. So should you subject me to that, that I could bear it with the strength and dignity that you would want of me? We can't change a lot of things, guys, because the law is in control. But what we can do is make ourselves accept the fact that even if we can't stop or change it, we can make the most and the best out of it. We need to learn how to take a lemon and make lemonade. When life, when Allah throws you a lemon, you turn it into a nice, beautiful drink. That's what the people in Gaza do every day. They make lemonade out of lemons every day. Could you do the same? I don't think so. All right. Then, then also another name that we talked about yesterday is how Allah is El Jabbar. El, El Jabbar. El Jabbar. What does that mean? That means he is the compeller. He is the restorer. That means that he is the one who drives forces and returns things back to its former state. Only a law can drive or force or return something to its former condition. Only a law can stop what's going on in Jerusalem and restore it and return it to its former condition. If you truly believe that the land belongs to the Arabs over there, then only a law can drive it, force it, or return it to that back to who you think it belongs to, okay? Not America, not you. So Allah shows us how he is the compeller, how he is the one who drives forces and returns back by the fact that look at how something dies. When something dies in this world, it decomposes and it returns back to its former state of dirt. We were all created from dirt and we go back to that state. Also, look at how a child can go from being an infant and grow up to become an old person. Look at how Allah shows us that only he is able to cause us to overcome the trials of life and become stronger. Look at how at all this is a daily occurrence, what's going on over there in Jerusalem and that part of the world, this is a daily occurrence for those people. And all it does is make them stronger. That's why they try, their trials get more severe. It's a sign of their faith. It just makes them stronger. That strength comes from a law. Only he is the one that can change you to something better. 
And also he shows us how he is El Jebbar by how he can cause you to go from rich to poor, from sweet to sour, from good to evil. And also he shows us how he is the restorer by how he brings some of us into Islam and he takes others out of it. He strengthens the people in Gaza. Wow, the people here in the West become weaker and weaker and weaker. Hello, goodbye. So now, how can we incorporate those attributes of a law into ourselves? How can we take that name, El Jabbar, and make it attributes within ourselves? What did we come up with yesterday? Who can tell us? What did we come up with yesterday, Sister um, Latifa? What did we come up with yesterday, Latifa? You guys should have taken a screenshot. You don't just screenshot for Sister Pasha. Hello, take a screenshot. Hijab I'm wearing, you can get it from Pasha. Okay. Fast track fashions. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, you said, uh, uh, how, does, uh, how does he show this power? Is we already different? know how he shows it. How can you take the, the uh, take the meaning of Allah's name, the compeller, the restore, and take it and make it attributes within yourself? Um, okay. I just gave you exam the examples we came up with yesterday on how he shows us. Okay, you said something about how he how how he make you go back to dirt and then bring right. you back alive, right? Right, that's so one of the ways he shows us. Okay, so how could I do that? Bring yeah, what did we come up that? with for yesterday? I think, well, um, I took a screenshot. You say I would not attach myself too much to anything. There you go. Girl. Right, right. So I won't attach myself too much. Allah shows us how he can cause the body to decompose and return back to its original state of dirt. How can you incorporate that into yourself? Well, I'm not gonna attach myself too much to anything here in this world because I know that everything is temporary just like, and, and will fade away. Our bodies is temporary. This beauty I have is temporary. Eventually my beauty will disappear. It's disappearing now. Thank you, makeup, you know, hello. Everything will eventually fade away. So I'm not going to attach myself too much to anything here. We, we talked about that in our Hadith class yesterday. One of the advices that the Prophet gave to the companions were, if you want to earn the love of Allah and the love of the people, do be indifferent. Remember that Hadith yesterday? Be indifferent to this world. So I'm gonna remain indifferent because nothing here lasts forever. I'll be indifferent. I will try to do the good deeds that I can do while I'm young and able to, because eventually I'm gonna become old and unable. Also, we talked about how Allah giveth and taketh away, how Allah will, can cause us to, to grow to something better. Like for many people, like the people of Gaza, the trials they incur cause them to become stronger. So I'm going to learn from that when I'm faced with any type of hardship in life. I'm going to first of all call upon a law for help in dealing with it. And I'm going to humble myself. And not look down on others. I'm going to humble myself and accept the fact that the only way I can grow from this hardship is through the help of Allah. Because if I don't have his help, I could crumble. 
I could be like a lot of those people that you see on TV here in America holding rallies for Palestine. The women don't have hijabs on. The men got cigarettes hanging out their mouth or the women got little mammy rags of a flag tied around their head, but they got their breasts exposed. And you want to reach, you fighting for free Palestine, you better free yourself. Free yourself, because women in Palestine don't walk around like that. The women in Gaza are covered in, hij in, in jilbab and hijab when they leave their homes. They ain't sitting on the streets with their bodies exposed like prostitutes holding up banners. Okay. The people of Gaza understand that after every hardship comes ease because Allah is the compeller. He's the one that can drive force and return you to another state. The people of Gaza know that they're going through hell right now, but it's just temporary. That's why they say, Sister Layla, tell the people on Sunna followers to just make do it for us. And yes, I have people in Palestine that follow this website. You guys remember Brother Zaman? Brother Zaman. Zaman left Brentwood, California, and he moved back home to Palestine. And what does Brother Zaman say? Just make do it for us, Sister Layla. We love y'all. You know, pray for us. We can handle it. The people here are strong. These are the most strongest Muslims you will ever come upon. Just make do it. That's all we need is you do it. And have a good day tomorrow. That's their attitude. And have a good day tomorrow. Okay, so those are the two names that we discussed yesterday. And so today what I'm going to do is put another name. Let's look at another name of a law. And this time I want to see how well you guys do today. Uh, Sister Amina Fresno, we're going to start with you today. Since you know your Eid is over, you had a nice Eid. Alhamdulillah, Sister uh, Fresno. I'm glad that you and the family had fun. But now it's back to the to, to the uh, drawing board here. Today, we're going to start off with another name of a law. El. Let's look at it in Arabic. Fresno. El mut. El muta. El muta. Kabir. You guys see that? El Mutak Kabir. Shada. Sister Amina Fresna. Shada over the back. Duma on the mu on the mean. Sukun here. El Mutak Kaboom. Not boom. It's right here. Kisra. So not boom. El Mutakabir. El Mutakabir. Shadow on the back. El Mutakabir. See that? El Mutakabir. You got it, Fresno? Let me hear you pronounce it. I mean, the Fresno. Yeah, I see the two Bs. Okay. okay, let me hear you pronounce it. El Mutak. No, not talk. This and not ta is ta. Oh, ta. You gonna okay, don't so change the meaning. If you guys okay. don't pronounce those <laughs> vowels right, you change the meaning. This is fusha. Fusha is not a bunch of spitting and guttural clucking. It's beautiful. Pronounce it, Fresno. Okay. El mu ta el ta el mu ta kebir. There you go. Exactly. El mu. El Mutakabir. El Mutakabir. Everybody got that? Beautiful name. What does it mean? In English, it means the supreme and majestic. The supreme and majestic. Allah is the most supreme and majestic. Well, you, again, you know, we, we don't understand words that's larger than four letters that well. So let's break that down. What does to be supreme and majestic mean? Well, it means to be superior over everything else and to have impressive dignity. Dignity. Remember, guys, I am always teaching you in my classes. 
I'm always telling you, whatever we do, have dignity. Now y'all see where I'm always saying, it's not because Layla's arrogant. It's not because I'm conceited. I am a dyer and I teach Tawheed because Tawheed is the essence of Islam. And Allah demands that whatever we do in life, we do it with dignity. Without dignity, you corrupt whatever you do. If you want to cry, cry with dignity. With dignity, that means I'm not going to transgress the limits. If I want to cry, I'm not going to slap my face and scream, why me? No, I'm going to have dignity. I'm going to do like the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the tears may come. The tears may come and I may do a little, you know, a little noise, but it's with dignity. When I dress, I want to look dignified. I want to be covered beautifully and be dignified even in the way I dress. When I walk, walk with dignity. When I eat, eat with dignity. When I speak, speak in a dignified manner. Don't speak above the people. Don't speak beneath the people. Don't use profanity. When I put the curse words in there, the B word and all that, that's not dignity. The way I'm speaking to you now, this is dignified. Allah loves dignity. And even when we die, we die with dignity. You want your life to be filled with dignity and your death too. That's why the prophet said, don't meet a bad ending. You don't want the angel of death to come knocking on your door and catch you with your underwear down. You want to die even in a dignified manner. A dignified manner means I am in complete submission to my Lord. I am prayed up in my prayers. I'm prayed up in my Ramadan fast. I've done a lot of good deeds. My death, I can sit there and meet death in a dignified manner. Dignity. That's to be supreme. Everybody get that? Okay, let's look at it again. So, to be El Mutakabir, El Mutakabir. the supreme and majestic. That means that, that Allah is superior over all things. He has this impressive, impressive, and impressive dignity about him. Impressive. What does it mean to impress? Who can give me the meaning of impress? Look it up on dictionary.com. What does it mean to impress? Because Allah doesn't just have dignity. He has impressive dignity. What does it mean to be impressive? Somebody give me the answer. Read it on it. Read it. Take the mic and read the word, the meaning of the word in English. Impressive. It means to make someone feel admiration and respect. Allah's dignity is so great that you cannot help but to have respect and awe of him. He's so dignified. He leaves you with your mouth. Ugh. You know how they say, I dropped the mic. Allah drops the mic every time. That's how dignified he is. Ponder that. Can you imagine that? Ponder that. I am superior to all or others. What does it mean to be superior? Give me the meaning of superior. Someone look it up on dictionary.com. I want to break these superior. words down so there's no doubt. What does it mean? Read it. 
to be superior to all others. What is the meaning of superior? Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. To be um, like higher in rank or higher up. Allah is so high and he doesn't have to take drugs to get high. You know, I had this conversation earlier with somebody, my granddaughter. I told her, say no to drugs. Because I was listening to her talk on the phone to one of her little friends. And her little friend, I think, was telling her, yeah, somebody was, was eating edibles. I'm like, what the heck is edible? They got some new food? Rod granddaughter say, that's some type of drugs, mom. Kids eat these things made out of marijuana called edibles and get high. I said, what? She said, oh, come on, mom. Everybody does that. I said, oh, no, everybody don't. Layla Nasheba ain't never heard of it, never did it. I said, ain't none of my girls, my Bantus ain't doing that crap on my website. I said, ain't nobody I know sitting around eating no drugs. Allah is so high in his status. He don't need no drugs. It's a natural high. He's so superior over others. Something that the youth today probably can't imagine because the youth today probably think that in order to be superior, you got to get high. I don't know what kids think nowadays. Thank God I ain't got none. A child just ain't safe in this world today. But Allah is superior to all things and all others. That means he's higher in his rank, higher in his status, higher in his mannerisms, higher in his character. And his character his mannerisms is so much above ours that you are impressed by it. You can't help but be in awe of him. You cannot help but have respect for him due to the dignity in which he carries himself because of his good character, his good mannerisms, his good behavior. You guys see that? I'm giving you examples how to apply it. So when we break down that meaning, Allah is the most supreme, the most majestic, meaning he's superior to all others and has an impressive dignity. Now, here comes the hard part. Now that y'all understand the meaning, Sister Amina Fresno, let's start with you. Tell us, how does Allah show that he is superior to all others? And how does Allah show us that his dignity is so impressive? Give me an example. Just we need four. Let's start with one, Sister Amina Fresno. Give me one example as to how Allah shows us that he is El Mutakabir that he is superior to all others and has an impressive dignity. Show, give me one example as to how he shows it. I mean, a Fresno. And while I mean, a Fresno is guessing, I want to hear from people on Facebook. Let me look at Facebook. Okay, Sanaya said, okay, I didn't miss y'all other answers. I don't know why I have to, I don't see y'all answers until later on Facebook. I had to log out and log back in. Okay. Zarina, Sanaya, Sister Sada, give me an example as to how Allah shows us that he is superior to all others and how he has an impressive dignity. Sister Zarina, Sister Sanaya. And Sister Soda, and let me bring that laptop of mine in here. That way I can see y'all writing better. Jayla, let me get my granddaughter to bring me that laptop. Because I don't know why the phone I have to log out to see. I'm just going to say this by saying being it is. 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Another creation. Let me type for this little kid to bring me my laptop because I want to see Facebook answer. This is a very important name. Wait a minute. Hold on. Where's my Facebook stuff now? Okay. Allah is superior to all others and has an impressive dignity. How did you, how does he show that to us? By what did you say? Being, I said by saying be and it is. Can't nobody else do that. That's true. But can't you do better than that? Girl, that's as best, as good as it can get right now. Okay. Amina said the fact that he can say be and it becomes. Okay. That's impressive. But remember, then that does show that he's superior to all others because no one else can do this. None else, that's good, Fresno, can do this. Good job. Give me another one. Go ahead, Precious. Assalamu alaikum. Um, al Mutakabir. Uh, I would say that Allah shows us this because no one is above him, near him. That's another name. Beside, okay. No, that's a different name. Try not to get into any of his other names and attributes. Let me log out on Facebook. I definitely have to see Facebook. Let me log out and see. Jayla! Bring me the laptop. Um, okay, let's let me look at what quiet. they wrote here. Zarina said, how Allah is the supreme, the majestic, superior to all others and has an impressive dignity. How does he show that to us? How does he show his superiority and his impressive dignity to us? Sanaya said, no, that's not how. She said by sitting on his throne. No, you can't even see him on his throne, Sanaya. How does the law show us his impressive dignity? You can't see him. Zarina. Okay. Zarina said the fact that nothing happens without a law's permis permission. <sighs> I really want y'all to get better than that. Um, let me let me try. Okay, go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. Uh in designing the universe, designing his creatures, specifics, the delicacy. Why come y'all always take it to the creation? Because it's so magnificent. But no, but that's not a that's a different name. Y'all got to understand that every name it does not mean to create. We broke down the meaning of supreme. We broke down the meaning of impressive and dignity. It has nothing to do with creating. So no, we're not going to use creating. That's a cop out. That's an easy way. And no, y'all are better than that because uh, look, what is the meaning? Read the meaning of impressive dignity and tell me how does that relate to creation? A law. Wait a minute, I'm turning on my laptop. This girl, she just now brought it. Is superior to all others and has an impressive dignity. It's his impressive dignity that makes him so superior, guys. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, let's try this. Would it be that he is the best of the best and that uh, only the best is around him? Something like that. Okay, no. let me. Okay, let me hold. Let me unscreen share. This is wait a minute. like I told y'all. It's gonna get more difficult as we do these yeah. things. Let me. I have to. I can't screen sh share and uh, do this. But I'm a. I'm gonna open up my screen. Let me yeah. hold on. All right, can y'all still see my screen? It's gonna be hard to do. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna share my screen, the whole screen, and I'm gonna go to dictionary.com. Okay, I want to try one more time. That's Wait a minute, okay. let, me, let me do this first because I okay, hold on, just okay. When we do the names, I can't get rid of that of a law to go over the name to learn the names of a law. What you guys are gonna have to do is first of all, 
learn the meaning of the English words. And that's the problem. We got impressive dignity. He has an impre impressive dignity. Type in Google the meaning. What does it mean to have impressive dignity? What does it mean to have an impressive dignity? Here it is. You go to dictionary.com. Uh, this one ain't going to get it. Uh, what is impressive dignity? I'm trying to, you know, here we go. I'm trying to find a good dictionary. Okay. Dignity. The impressive behavior of someone who controls their emotions in difficult times. You see, uh, uh, Anissa, this has nothing to do with creation. It has to do with controlling your character, your behavior. I try to tell y'all character, behavior, what makes a loss higher and superior over others, the way he, his, his character, his behavior, his mannerisms. That's not creation. Okay. Y'all understand? The key words here would be dignity, impressive, and superior. Dignity is behavior. Dignity refers to how a person behaves. Maintain, retain your dignity. It's hard for us to maintain our dignity, especially in the face of a calamity. We transgress the limits. It's hard for us to maintain dignity in good times and bad. A law does that. Okay? Dignity is the key word. Also, impressive. What does impressive mean? You admire it. So we admire a law. We can't help but respect him for the dignity that he has. The great skills he has. You guys see, this is not creation. And what's the other word? Supreme. You see, when you, you break down a law's names, you look for the key words. Supreme means most important, most powerful. So when we look at the attributes of a law, this is so hard for me to work these screens and do all this. But let me try this again. The key word, El Mutak Kabir, a law is the supreme majestic. It means superior to all others having impressive dignity. What are the key words here? Superior, impressive, dignity. That has nothing to do with creation. That has to do with manners. That has to do with character. That has to do with behavior. So now, how does the law show us this? Okay, he can say be and it becomes. Good job, Fresno. Give me another way, guys, in which Allah shows that he's superior to all others and has impressive dignity. This has nothing to do with creation. It has to do with manners, character, behavior. Salam. He's... Go ahead. Um, he showed great dignity when, um, when Shaitan disobeyed him. He didn't yell at him or anything. He just showed him that he was greater than he was. Okay, how did he show him? You're on the right path, but tell me how he showed him. He explained to him that he is above him and if he had asked him to do something, he was supposed to do it, not question his um his command. Okay, hold on for a second. Let me I'm logging on Facebook with my laptop so I can see the people on Facebook better. Okay. Hold on. I tell you, I'm working three computers now, and this is hard. And you got a screen share. Okay, let me turn the sound off here so I can hear. Okay, now people on Facebook, I, okay, I see Sharice. She said, Allah is supreme because there's no one like him in power. Okay, Sharice, we talked about power yesterday. Power is, is not the attribute today. The attribute today is how Allah is superior to all others and has an impressive dignity. So your answer is wrong. Get one of the kids the answer. They'll tell you. Okay, Sister uh, Norto, you said a law controls the dominion. That is a different attribute. That was yesterday. We're talking about how he has an impressive dignity. 
how he proves he's superior to all others through his impressive dignity. We ain't talking about the power. We talking about the dignity today. Sister Laley, you said king of the king. King of the king has nothing to do with today's topic. Mm. Facebook is completely lost. Okay, now Latifa, let's see, you're a teacher. I didn't really hear you because I was trying to log in. Give me an example well, as to how Allah shows that he is superior over all others and has an impressive dignity. Okay. Um, I was saying because he's the best at how he handles or delivers his wrath or his or his wrath or his punishment or his goodness. There you go. It really all it. relates to behavior, guys, behavior or character, the way a law delivers his punishment. Even when a law punishes, he does it with dignity. He allows some to survive and others not to. He could send a tornado. That tornado can take out maybe just two people and the rest survive. Oh, that's impressive. How did you do that? You could be in a car accident. You can be riding a car with three people. The car crashes. Everybody dies except one. That's impressive. You guys see that? The way Allah delivers his punishment, it's impressive, okay? The way he, and the way he sends his, his reward, the way he sends his reward is also impressive. Y'all see that? The way Allah delivers his punishment, is impressive and the way he sends his reward is also impress uh, impressive give me an example of an impressive way of receiving his reward of, of sending his reward give me an impressive way that Allah can send reward he can cure a disease that's something I just thought of right quick. Y'all should come with many different answers. He can, he can that. cure a disease. That's yeah. impressive. Yes. You can be diagnosed with cancer. The doctor can tell you that you're knocking on death's door then, then a week later, oh my God, it just went away. Or it's, it's starting to, uh, to, to, uh, to break itself up. Look at uh, what happened with Antar. Her whole legs filled with, with blood clots. And all of a sudden, the blood clots are uh, two weeks later, they're gone. That's impressive. That's impressive dignity. Impressive dignity. So the way Allah delivers his punishment is an impressive dignity. He does it all with impressive dignity. And the way he sends his reward is also an example of his impressive dignity. Good job, Latifah. Anybody else? Give me a third example. It sounds like I was just about to say that, Layla, about how he was impressive for me. You know, you said yeah. oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let's see what else we got on Facebook. Uh, Brother Melvin. Allah revealed to us good manners and good character through our Prophet Muhammad. Okay, exactly. That's another way. The fact that Allah sent the prophet Muhammad to teach us what good manners and character is, that too is impressive of a law. He sent someone from amongst ourselves 
he sent a man who could not read or write to teach us these things. That alone is impressive, guys. The prophet Muhammad couldn't even read or write. He didn't go to college. He was not a graduate. Uh, well, he didn't have no PhDs. Like you hear these men today uh, 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 brag about. But even though, despite, despite that the prophet had no PhD or education, he taught us how to be better people. Isn't that impressive? That's dignified and impressive. He had no edumacation, no edumacation. He couldn't read, he couldn't write, no bachelor's degree, no master's degree, no PhD. Isn't that impressive, guys? especially when we living in a day and era in which Muslims want to boast and brag about what, what CAF or college they graduated from or what Muslim online uh, uh, webinar they graduated from. Okay. Um, can it have anything to do with him being the only one worthy of being arrogant? Or is that like... Give me not... an example. Again, where you have to give examples as to how Allah shows that he is the most supreme and the most majestic. Give me an example how he is superior to all others and has an impressive dignity. The fact that he can say be and it becomes, that's very impressive. And that shows he's superior. The, the way that like he him. delivers his punishment and his reward, very impressive and dignified. The fact that he sent an, un, an, an illiterate man to teach us good morals, very impressive. So give me another one. One more. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Let me try this. Uh, the fact that he let those who disbelieve in him and associate or partners with him, and he let them live on earth, provide for them, and um, they living a good life. To me, that's, um, that's very impressive. That is. Good job. The fact that Allah allows the Kafir to live and flourish here on earth, despite the fact that they disbelieve in him. That is very impressive, don't you guys think? Oh God, what happened? Oh, please don't let me lose this, let me save it. Oh, okay, good, thank you, Allah. I was gonna say, don't let me say, lose that. Don't you guys think that that is more than impressive? If a law, you know, a lot of people may say, well, why is the law allowing the Kafir to even live? They don't believe in him. They don't worship him. Why is he still allowing them to exist? Why is he making the rain fall from the sky? Why is the law doing, wasting his time with any of this? Well, that shows how much better he is than we are. That shows his its supreme dignity. How many of us have that about ourselves? We get mad at a person and we'll forget all the good things that person ever done. You could be a person that did all the good, gave a person a million dollars, tick that person off and that person will hate you and forget everything good you ever did. Allah allows the Kafirs to flourish to not just survive, but to even flourish in this world. That's very impressive. Okay, let's see what Zarina wrote. Zarina says she's impressed by all the laws create. Okay, again, uh, Sister Zarina, that's creation. Okay, this attribute, I mean, this name of a law. It means to be superior over all and have impressive dignity. As I showed you guys in Webster's dictionary, dignity refers to behavior and manners. It does not refer 
to creating something. And I know you're having a hard time, but uh, I expect that this is y'all your first time taking this class. The reason why the uh, precious Anissa, Omi Barrow and them are doing better than you is because this is not my, they, they took it the first time. For those of you on your first time ever being taught this way, it's gonna be very difficult. That's why I stopped teaching it, to be honest, because it, it caused them so much harm, we couldn't even get to 10, 10 names. But they're doing, they've grown in their faith. They've grown in their faith. I figured they could handle it now, and they are. Okay, but no, again, you have to start off by looking up these words in the dictionary. The key word is superior, impressive, and dignity. Those things do not relate to creating anything. It relates to having character or behavior. Okay, let's see who else tried to answer. Uh, Sister Norto, I don't know where you are today. You all over the place and you all wrong, Sister Norto. <laughs> Good salam job, alaykum. Brother Melvin. Okay, well, alaykum salam. Um, can it be that uh, he created people all on different levels of uh, intelligence, of ages, uh, beauty, uh, and things like that, uh, that's, so that we can... that's still creation. You the, you said oh. the key word create. If if y'all have the name create in your answer, you know you got a different word, a different name. In fact, that's the next name we're gonna do. The create to all those things y'all talking about creation that applies, but this is behavior, behavior. El mutakab el mutakabir el mutakabir. El Mutakabir means the, the supreme and majestic. To be supreme means to be superior to all others. Majestic means to have impressive dignity, impressive behavior. Majestic refers to having impressive behavior. Supreme refers to being superior over others. This is not creation. Can I try one more time? <laughs> Yeah, but okay. we got the four we needed, but go ahead. You can, so you can okay. try another one. We'll try another one. I, I think um, earlier when I said arrogance, I mean, I don't know if it goes together, but um, he wasn't created. I know that's something that's superior and oppressive is that he wasn't created. So, I don't know. But you, the, what did you put in your, your answer? The word created. I, so that means you're talking about a different name. Okay. If uh, if another name is in your answer, then it's not this name. This name refers to being superior over everything else and having impressive behavior. Hmm. This has nothing to do with creating anything. Okay, okay, so we came up with four good ones here. The fact that he can say B. That's behavior to say, this is an action. I am saying B and it becomes, that's not, that's behavior. Who else can say B? Who else can say B? Okay, that's behavior. And then the second one, the way he delivers punishment. He can drop a house on top of you and you can walk away still alive. That's behavior, I dropped, that's an action verb. I dropped, I talk, I drop. Behavior is action, action, action. I can drop something and you walk away alive. That's impressive, okay? The third example, the prophet Muhammad, he was an illiterate man. He could not read. He could not even write. He had no college degree, no high school diploma, no PhD. Didn't have to brag about his credentials. But he came and taught us how to be good people. That's very impressive. That's very oppress impressive that Allah chose him. See? Another action verb, I choose, I choose him. The Allah chose him. The fact that Allah chose the prophet Muhammad to carry out his message, 
That was impressive because the prophet could have uh, 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 made it be Abu Sufyan, who was educated. He could have chose Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was educated. He could have chose uh, uh, Umar. Umar was educated, but he didn't choose any of them. He decided to choose the uneducated one. Y'all get it? He could have chose Uthman. Uthman was educated too. But he didn't choose them to carry his message. He chose the uneducated one. That's impressive, ain't it? Nowadays, you go to apply for a job. Are they going to choose the uneducated person over you? If I'm applying for a job as a communication specialist, I have a bachelor's degree in communications. The lady applying next to me is just a graduate from high school. They're going to give the job to me. Because I have the so-called credentials. See how impressive it was that Allah chose a man who didn't have those credentials of reading and writing. That's the ones I'm talking about. So again, these are four good examples. Do you guys get it? Anybody confused? People on Facebook. Like I told you, the names are going to get harder. Before I move forward, anybody confused on Facebook? Fresno. My confusion is coming on how to how I'm supposed to. There, yeah, to that's that's what we get into. But you, this part you with me on, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm doing it slow. I'm looking on Facebook to see their answers again. They're lost. The people on Facebook, you guys are just lost. I can see. Girl, it's hard. Yeah, for them. Yeah. Okay. This, learning the law's names is not easy, guys. Now do y'all see that though for the frauds? I'm gonna give you a degree in this line because you can recite all 99 names. No, tell me what those names mean. Go ahead. Um, I was thinking about you know how we went over yesterday, like there's many examples in the Quran. And I was thinking more of like, you know, Allah shows superiority and how majestic he is through his entrance. And then he, even though his we don't what? know, through his like, you know, his, you know, how he introduces himself or just like. Yeah, that's another example too. And I was going to say, what about the example where Allah like describes how he'll like enter, you know, how he'll do the whole, you know, day of judgment thing and how. That's what I would have came up. That's one of the answers I would have given. But there's so yeah, that's true too. There's so many ants there, you know, there's so many millions of ways that Allah shows us his names. I'm just taking the first four that y'all gave me, but that could have been an answer too. These okay. are the four that y'all gave today. But I could come up with about a million more. But these are good. Your answers were right. Yeah, these are the first four. Okay, now here comes the hard part, as I mean Fresno says. It gets even harder. Let me fix this screen. This is the hard part. How to incorporate the attributes of this name. How to incorporate the attributes of this name. Those four things that we came up with, those are the attributes. We came up with four attributes of El Mutakadbir. That we came up with four attributes of El Mutakadbir. One attribute is Allah can say be and it becomes. Another attribute is the way he delivers his punishment and reward with impressive dignity. Another attribute is the fact, the way he sent an uneducated man to teach us good manners. And the other attribute you came up with is how Allah allows the unbelievers to live and flourish despite the fact that they hate him or don't even believe in him. Good job. Those are the four attributes y'all came up with for today. So now what we're going to do is take those four attributes and tell me how you can incorporate them into yourself. I mean, Fresno, let's let you let's have you start with the first one. You came up with how Allah can say be and it becomes. 
How can you incorporate that into yourself? You can't make something become, but what no. can you do? I can go to him to help me. Mashallah. I can call upon Allah to help me in becoming what I want to become in life. Good job. See how easy that was, Fresno? No, no. You know, no. you're not aware. I'm going to tell you something, I mean, You're one of the strongest Muslim women I have ever met in my life. You deal with trials every day. And the reason how you get through your trials is because you utilize the names and attributes of Allah every day in your life. And you ain't even aware that you do it. That's because you are a true believer and it comes natural for you. Just like you spitted this answer out that quick. You're not even aware that you are already living Allah's names and attributes because you are a believer. That's one of the signs of a believer. You just gave this answer and don't even anywhere. You gave the answer. How can you uh, attribute the fact that Allah can say be and it become? Well, I can't create and make nothing become, but I can call upon Allah and ask him to help me, to help me to be whatever I want to be, to help me to change the condition of myself to something better. MashaAllah. Good job, Fresno. Hello. Anybody else want to add to that answer? See how it comes easy for the believer? Walaikum salam. Who's next? Who is that? I was going to ask. Okay. Um, when we, when we make dua, we should not say why it hasn't been answered yet. We should know that it will be answered whenever Allah says be, because that's when it's best for us. Okay. Well, put it into yourself, make it, you know what I mean? Make it an attribute, put it in the form of an attribute uh, of how you can incorporate it. I will not like that. Okay. When I make dua, I should not be saying why it hasn't been answered yet. And know that it will be answered whenever Allah says it will be because he knows when it's best for me. Okay, when calling upon help from Allah, I will never lose hope of his answer or mercy. That's what she's saying, basically. Remember, we have to have hope of Allah's mercy. We have to hope that Allah will respond to us. Good job. That's all exhibiting El Mutakabir. That's showing superiority over others. How many people lose hope in life? Most people do. When you look on social media right now and see all these people with all this Gaza stuff and flags and pillars all over their Facebook pages and people crying and stuff, acting like the world done came to an end when it ain't came to an end yet. We ain't got there yet. It's getting ready to get more funky than that. These are people that have no hope. They don't carry themselves with dignity, impressive dignity. If I'm going to call upon Allah to help me change the condition of myself, I'm going to do it with dignity by never losing hope of his answer. Hello, good job. Okay, you guys got it? People on Facebook, what's going on? Good job, Sanaya. You getting it? Zarina? Sometimes, sometimes okay. we don't understand. Salam alaikum. Walaikum salam. Sometimes we don't understand Allah's help when things happen and happen to us and we be like we might get upset and not understand why it happened to us. Like I was like telling my sister, like for uh, example, for me, like a Uber was sent to us. But when we went to the Uber, the guy locked the door. He wouldn't let us in. He said, oh, I have to check my thing. He said, I think I have wrong. She said, no, it's us. But he locked, I said, you know, sis, he wasn't for us. 
the law brought us someone that was for us was a Muslim. The next one was a Muslim. And he said, Ed Mubarak, all that. I said, that one wasn't for us. So sometimes we might lose hope in things that happen to us. Right. All of us do. Right. You know? Yes, yes, exactly. So you learn from this name, El Mutakabir. Yeah. That, you know, to never lose hope. That's impressive. A person that always keeps the hope going. That's impressive. Because like you said, it's so easy to throw the towel in and say, forget it. I'm just going to go home. Forget it. Okay, let's look at the second part. The second one that you guys came up with. The second attribute of El Mutakabir, you said the way Allah delivers his punishment and his reward. He shows impressive dignity in the manner in which he delivers his punishment and reward. How can you incorporate that into yourself, guys? How can you incorporate the fact though, of, as to how Allah, when he delivers punishment and reward, he does it in an impressive way. Fatima Kayum said, she can incorporate this by being grateful when he saves her and appreciative when he sends reward. Good job, Kayum. okay? We can be more grateful to Allah for the way he delivers us from our evil circumstances. Good job. And more appreciative of the good that he sends. Now, Fatima Kayum is shocked, like Fresno was, that she got that right. Why are you shocked that you got that right, Fatima Kayum, when Allah has been answering your dua all month long? Like I said, many of you are already living the names of Allah. Many of you have already incorporated the meaning of Allah's names into yourself. Allah has delivered you out of your circumstances and he made your circumstances better for you. So of course you cannot help right now, Fatima of Kayum, but to understand what El Mutakabir means. You are living Allah's mutakabir every day. You are a witness of his supreme and majesty because he has delivered you from your circumstances and changed them to something good. That's why you answered that one so well. Just like I mean a Fresno answered the first one so well because y'all live in this attribute every day and not, not even aware of it. Okay, who else on that one? Anybody with any, another example as to how to, uh, to implement uh, the second attribute, how Allah delivers his punishment and reward with impressive dignity. Walaikum salam, who is that? We can be patient. Okay, Lucy. We can be patient like right now, I'm going through what I'm going through. And I have to be patient and I have to wait. I continue to pray, but I'll be patient and I wait on what I ask him for. Okay, we can show patience. When faced with a law's punishment or reward, just like those people over there in Gaza, they show patience. It's every day for them. This, that's how they live. That's their everyday life. Rockets going off, bombs exploding, people dying. This is part of their everyday life. They ain't got to turn the TVs on. They can go outside and watch the TV, watch the news. So they take it as they go. They're patient. 
They, they are in acceptance. We can show patience when faced with a law's punishment or reward and acceptance of his decree. Like the people in Gaza do. It's the people here in America that's acting like fools. It's the people here in the Western world that call themselves Palestinians. I'm going to be honest. It's the people in the Western world that call themselves Palestinians as acting stupid. Not the real ones over there. They ain't acting stupid. In fact, they don't like the ones in America. They said them people make us look weak and stupid. Because we don't act that way. We don't scream, holler, cry, and tear off our clothes and, and go around damning everybody. We don't do that. We accept the God of Allah. We know that Allah is El Mutakabir. They say those Palestinians living in the Western world, they don't know what it's like to be a real Palestinian. That's what some of them say to me. They say, lady, them, I'm sorry. You, they don't know what it's like. That's why they over there and they ain't over here. They're not the ones acting that way. It's the ones that don't live there that are. Okay, let's see. Now, what about uh, the third attribute y'all came up with? The fact that Allah sent the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to teach us, and he was illiterate. He couldn't read, he couldn't write. He didn't come from no high status. He was just an everyday J a Joe Blow. Sister Leila? Yes. I wanted to say something about the other one. Uh, I don't know if it's right, but... Okay, okay. Uh, so I wanted to say that um, Allah delivers his punishment. Uh, uh, that's impressive. And uh, in comparison, we, we uh, can enjoin, um, I mean, forbid the evil and criticize when necessary good job and yeah and uh, for de delivering his reward we can enjoy the good and uh, compliment people yeah oh god you was i was typing and girl you was typing you sounded so good <laughs> we can enjoy i was i gotta redo i was writing in the wrong we can enjoy the good and for big the evil when necessary without transgressing. That's what she's trying to say. The limitations Allah has set in effect for us. MashaAllah, excellent, excellent. Because that's the problem today. You're not being El Mutakabir when you're to transgress the limits. And I'm sorry, guys, posting those pictures from 10 years ago on your Facebook pages of dead babies and dead bodies, you know, that's not impressive. That's not showing dignity. In fact, it's indignity. It's disrespectful to those people. And I'm going to tell you, the people in Palestine, in real Gaza, don't like that. They don't like you showing their dead people all over the news. You're disrespecting them. You're making it seem like they got a problem with a law's decree when they don't. The problem is you with your non-hijab wearing behind. You with your cigarette smoking behind. You with your non-praying behind. You with your alcohol selling behind. You got the problem. Okay, good job. Now, what about that other one, guys? The fact, how can you incorporate the fact that Allah chose a man who could not read or write to be the conveyor of his message? How can you incorporate that into yourself? Anyone? For this one, I was thinking more of like how, um, I don't know, like you should never judge a book by its cover. Like you cannot look at someone and say that they're a righteous or unrighteous person or this, or they're a good or a bad person. Basically just not judge a book by its cover. Good job. We will never judge a book by its cover. 
taqwa is in the heart and only Allah knows who has it. Instead, we judge from their actions and character. How dignified they are in their actions, how dignified they are in their character. Good job. And then the last one that you guys came up with, the fact that Allah allows the Kafir to live and flourish despite the fact that they disbelieve in him. That's very impressive. That shows dignity. Very few people could do that. No one could do that but Allah. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, inshallah, with that one, I would say that the fact that Allah allows them to live and flourish, we can at least live with them in peace here on, you know, in the world. I treat our neighbors kindly and things like that. Okay, we learn to live with others in kindness and respect, irregardless as to their personal beliefs, as long as they do not transgress us. Mashallah, beautiful. Okay, y'all ready to read what y'all came up with as a way of understanding and incorporating the law's name, El Mutakabiri? Let's see. We talked about how Allah is, most, is the superior. He's more superior over anyone or anything else. And he has an impressive dignity. He shows this through the fact that he can say be and it becomes. Also, he shows how impressive and dignified and majestic he is in the way he delivers his punishment and his reward. Also, the fact that he chose a man who was not of a high of a high status, who could not read or write to be, to be the conveyor of his truth. This was also impressive dignity. And the fact that Allah allows the Kafirs to live and flourish here on earth, despite the fact that they disbelieve in him. That's impressive. That's dignity. That's superiority. So how can we incorporate this name, El Mutakabir? Well, we can call upon Allah for help and ask him to help us to become whatever it is we want to be in life. We can call upon him and ask him to help us to change the condition of ourselves into something better. And when we do call upon him for help, we will never lose hope of his answer or mercy. And we will become more grateful to him when he does deliver us from our evil circumstances. And we will become more appreciative of the good that he sends to us. And we will show patience when faced with the law's punishments or reward. And we will accept his decree, whether it's good or bad. And we can enjoin the good and forbid the evil when necessary without transgressing the limitations of, that Allah has set in effect for us. And we will never judge a book by its cover. We understand that taqwa lies in the heart and only Allah knows who has it. Instead, we judge others from their actions and their character. And we learn to live with them in kindness and respect, irregardless as to their personal beliefs, as long as they do not transgress us. Mashallah. There it is. El Mutakabir. El Mutakabir. El Mutakabir. The Supreme and Majestic. See what y'all came up with? It took us, what, an hour, an hour and a half to do this one name. And that's the only name we're going to do today. 
because it's going to take another hour to do the other one. And I don't want to keep y'all here to nine. Any questions? Sister Amina Fresno, are you with us on this? I'm here. It wasn't that hard. It can't, it can't, it comes natural from you. You just not aware of it. Anybody else? Any comments? Yeah, I have one. Like uh, the, the one about the fact that he sent us a prophet who uh, couldn't read. Would we in turn also look at ourselves and say we would study more and learn more about Exactly. The and I'm looking at Fatima Kayum's answer too. She said by not thinking that because of our education that we're better than others either. Your money, your family status, and all of that doesn't make you better than someone. It's your belief in a law. Good job. Yeah, both of y'all are right. That could have been incorporated too. Because that's what you hear a lot, a lot now. These famous Muslim speakers boasting and bragging about all these PhDs they got. And those PhDs don't mean nothing. They still stupid people. There's mm. so many educated fools out there. Look at them. Listen to them. They sound crazy. You know, the things they say, all that education they have, and they still don't understand that Allah is the one in charge of what's happening in Gaza. Allah is the one in charge of what's happening. When I hear a Muslim blame America, you call yourself a believer and you want to put the blame on a country as to why something is happening on earth, then that shows me that you have a problem with Akita. You forgot what Layla Hayala law means. Allah is in control. We're just puppets of his. You don't like what's happening in the world. You need to get mad with Allah. Because that's his Carter. He said whatever good happens to us comes from him. And whatever bad happens, it, we, it comes from him too, as a result of what we brought on ourselves. So why are you sitting around pointing your finger at America and, and all these other countries? Allah is in control. You can't accept the cotter of Allah, then that means your, your belief system is messed up. Again, the prophet said, every people has their pagans. Our pagans are those people who call themselves Muslims, but they cannot accept the law's decree. They want to put, that, put what happens in life on everybody, but the fact that we brought it on ourselves. A basic, that's basic Tawheed. Tawheed one-on-one. All your PhDs and you don't understand Tawheed one-on-one. Come join my classes. I can take you there. Now, okay. Could you yeah. could you do something for me? Um, could you give us the word ahead of time so that maybe I can think better with this? You know what I'm saying? Instead okay, tomorrow we're gonna do well, let me look at my PowerPoint. To, and don't make it hard. We're gonna do the easy one for y'all. El colic. El Khalik, the creator. That's the one that y'all want to talk about so much, especially Anissa. Spell Khalik. It's on the screen. Oh, I don't see it. I want you to read in Arabic. El Khal. You see those I vowels? I don't, I don't, I don't see nothing but your L face. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I didn't, I thought I was screen sharing. I, I thought I was screen sharing. El Khalik. El Khalik. I want you to read it in Arabic. El Khalik. For those people out there that, that, that there's lies on Layla and say Layla don't, don't want y'all to learn Arabic. No, I want y'all to learn the Quran. I tell y'all, forget about that, that spitting slang. The Quran is not the spitting and all of that. It's beautiful. El Khalik. El Khalik. Learn how to read the Quran in, 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 in Arabic. It's Fusha. And don't mispronounce it. Don't say, uh, don't. When you make a, a, a an R, you change the meaning of the word. Learn how to read the Quran properly. A lot of Arabic people do not pronounce the Quran properly. Instead of saying bad, they say ba. 
When you say bar instead of bad, you change the meaning. When you say tall instead of tad, you change the meaning. So that's why I want y'all to see it in Arabic. These are Allah's names. Alcoholic. You can see how to pronounce it. Alcoholic. Y'all see that? People going around lying on Sister Layla Nasheba. Don't lie on me. I don't care, though. They've been lying on me since I was six years old. I don't care. Sick of people lying on me. Leave me alone. Go find somebody else's shoes to walk on. <laughs> okay, but this is the name we're going to do tomorrow. You know, alcoholic, the creator or the maker. Okay, any other questions? Um, um, uh, yeah. Was that Norto? <laughs> no, it was me, but you go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I had a, can you um, screen share again, Sister Lola? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I guess, well, can you go back to the um, word before this one? And by the way, guys, uh, if you guys want to, because uh, I don't have this on no uh, on no, no my website. If y'all want to take a picture of this or screenshot it so y'all can print it out, let me know and I can put you know put it on the screen like I am now. The word and y'all can take a picture of it on your cell phone and and print it out or screenshot it and and print it out. Okay, so I had a um, an example for the one that says the fact that he can say be and it becomes. Can can we say that like, um, I guess I was gonna say like speaking your actions into existence, not just saying oh I want to become a better person, but you know putting in the practice or just you know improving your characteristics. Yes. Actually putting yeah. In the work. Yeah. All of that is changing the condition of yourself. Yes. And then the second one I was saying um, where he, the way that Allah delivers his punishment or reward, I was going to say, what if a person, you know, gave, for example, a gift to someone and just like wrapped it up in an impressive manner, but like in a way where they can afford to, you know, yep. pay for not paying above your mean. That's and a good one. It to the person, and if the person doesn't like it um, and says something doesn't like or says something bad about it, you show impressive dignity by not, you know, taking exactly. a picture reminding yourself that it came out of the kindness of your heart and you were doing it for Allah's sake. And the simple fact that you did this for another person, you know, goes a long way. Exactly. That's a good way too. And like I said, you guys are setting, there's a million examples. If we were to count the examples Allah shows us, we never could. But what I'm, you guys, what we're doing is just taking the first four y'all come up with and whatever y'all come up with. But yeah, there's other examples we could have used too and other ways of explaining that we could use too. But yeah, that's, that, could, that would have worked too. Yeah, there's so many other ways that we can explain it and other examples we can use. But we're just going with the first four y'all come up with. Exactly. Does anybody need to take a picture or a screenshot of any of the other ones we went over? If I was to read all the ones we got so far, girl, we'd have a long, long list. We did um, El Rock. Can you, um, can you go back to the first two from yesterday? I mean, the two from yesterday. Okay, yesterday we did uh, El Aziz. Yeah, I El just Aziz. You taking a picture of it? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. You finished with it? Let me know when you need the next one. Okay, I got this one. And then we did El Jebbir. I mean, at Jebbar. El Jebbar. Okay, I got it. Okay. Let's do, I'm going to read what we came up with for the last three El Aziz, El Jebbar, and El Mutakabir. How to apply those three? We can hold ourselves accountable for the choices, decisions, and actions that we make in life. And we can work hard to not complain about the things that are beyond our control. 
and instead learn to accept and make the best of those things. We can work hard to rid ourselves of those habits and decisions that can be detrimental to ourselves. And we can work hard to leave behind all thoughts and past experiences that may keep us from moving forward in our journey and concentrate on that which will make us better in our journey. Also, we can call upon a law to help us in becoming Oh, wait, oh, no, I did that. Okay. Also, we will not attach ourselves too much to anything here in this world because everything here is temporary and will eventually fade away. We will do as many good deeds as we can while we're young and able. And when faced with hardships, instead of trying to handle it ourselves, we take it to a law for guidance and help. And we humble ourselves and not look down on others in acceptance of the fact that what we have can be easily taken away from us by a law. And we realize that after every hardship comes relief. So we call upon a law to help us to become what we need to become in life and to help us to change the condition of ourselves. When calling upon help, we never lose hope of his answer or mercy. And we become grateful to Allah for the way he delivers us from our evil circumstances. And we become more appreciative of the good that he sends to us. And we show patience when faced with his punishment or reward. And we always maintain acceptance of his decree, both the good and the bad of it. We enjoin the good and we forbid the evil when necessary without transgressing a law's limits. And we never judge a book by its cover because we understand that piety is in the heart and only a law knows who has it. So we judge others from their actions and character and we learn to live with them in kindness and respect irregardless as to their personal beliefs, as long as they do not transgress us. Those are the last three words. Look at that, guys. Do y'all see what the prophet tried to paint for us? Allah only shared knowledge of 99. Can you imagine what a book you would have? To break down all 90, when we, if we were to complete this course, because I don't know if we're going to complete it because when it starts getting difficult, I'm going to stop. And it's starting to get difficult for some of y'all now. But can you imagine what we would come up with? Powerful. That's tall heat. You would be one of the strongest people. You would be able to stand and deal with life, the good and the bad of it, without transgressing a law or yourself. These are the people that will be in paradise. Like the prophet said, anyone who can put to action the names of a law, that's a person of paradise. Just those three names I just read, look what it would do to you. You know, we have a lot to work on as a nation, guys. I really, and it's a shame because we had some people give lectures today. I was looking on social media. There's a lot of people giving lectures on Palestine, on Gaza, on Jerusalem. I want y'all to look how many hits they got. A thousand. One point K viewers. There's only 10 people listening to me on Facebook. And I only got 30 of y'all in here. Only 50 people will hear me. And what I got to say is better than anything that those other people are talking about. Because all those other people are talking about is nothing except stuff that will make you want to get angry and go out and hurt somebody. I'm teaching you how to handle it. But I only have 50 people at the most. They got 1,000, 2,000, 1 1.K views. And all I got is 50. If I get 50, I usually just have 20. It's a sad, this world is a sad place. But this is what the Muslims need to be learning and hearing on how to deal with life. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments? 
Okay, if there's no questions, we're going to stop right here for today. Uh, let me remind everybody, we have the uh, life of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That class will be with Brother Muhammad in about 15 minutes. I will broadcast it on Zoom, I mean, on Facebook to you guys. So I'm going to close up for now. Don't forget, we have the Hadith class tonight as well. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.